Sean O'Malley's next opponent is going to be Cheeto Vera. Now, I'm confident in telling you that, and I'm not breaking news for you. I'm confident in telling you that. I don't believe that Aljo is going to get an immediate rematch. I don't believe that Marab is going to get the fight. Now, I like that they're working for it. I like this direction that they're going. Here's the issue. The December card is the only pay-per-view that's left. And there's a very interesting fight going on behind the scenes that I think more people should be talking about. I mean, just, just for example, so you have one pay-per-view that isn't spoken for. You have Conor McGregor claiming he's going to fight Michael Chandler. Now, we can't take Conor's claims for what we used to be able to take the claims for, but I'm just sharing with you, if Conor doesn't get the date, he's going to lose it to somebody else and he's a very competitive guy. Like, that's an interesting story for me. You have Volkanovski, who has now publicly said he's not going to do the Islam fight next. He's going to stay at 145 because the Islam fight would be into next year, 2024, and he wants to fight this year. Okay, great. Well, as you look at the calendar and what's available and what's left, again, it would drive you to the December card. You then have Leon and Colby that are supposed to fight this year and I think are supposed to have that card. I believe that they're penciled in and that just hasn't been announced to us. That's what I think. And out of nowhere, you have Sugar Sean calling for the date. Now, that is extremely relevant. And here's why, okay? Cheeto's next. Cheeto's next for a number of reasons. None stronger than the fact that Sean O'Malley says that he's next. Then you have the evidence that Cheeto, according to many athletic commissions, beat Sean O'Malley. You then have the fact that I believe Cheeto Vera was the unannounced backup fighter the night that Sean became world champion. I believe the entire reason Cheeto was put on that card against Pedro Munoz was if something happened in the main event, you could grab him and pull him up. When guys do those favors, when guys are put in those positions, they're next. The most relevant thing is you're always going to have a what if, and guys should always be playing that card because things change in this sport fast. So just by example, Cheeto gets hurt. Do you think Cheeto's the kind of guy that's going to pass on an opportunity because he's hurt? You could have that debate, but before you have that debate, they don't have a date locked in. And I don't believe that December, even though Sean called for it, is even in the cards. So what, I, what I'm sharing for you is it doesn't appear to me that there's a situation where if Cheeto got injured and couldn't go when he wanted to go, they don't have a date. I believe they would just move that. There's plenty of competition. There's plenty of other things that they get, got to do. I don't believe that there's going to be a scramble that would then create an opportunity. And we see those all the time. We're seeing one this weekend. This is, this is how Sean Strickland at rank number six is going in against Izzy. Like, these things matter a lot. And there's just not very many times in life, I don't know of any, as a matter of fact, where you get a job that you don't ask for. So I, I do believe that Marab is doing everything right. I believe that Aljo is doing everything right. I also believed one week before Sean became world champion that the true number one contender was Corey Sandhagen. And I've been told by sources that he hurt his hand, elbow, something with his arm, but like had a surgery, that he's out. I think that Nurmagomedov is going to be a very meaningful person within that division. But I know that he's hurt. I was never told what ailed him. But he was supposed to compete the week before and pulled out because of an injury. So he's off the board. And it, it's, it's one of these spots where as you start to look at the chess and you start to look at the maneuvering, you then have to appreciate and see what Henry Cejudo is doing. Henry is trying to get a fight with Marab. That's a very hard fight. It's a very, very hard match for both guys, but that would also be very meaningful. It'd be very easy for Henry to claim number one contendership, not to mention the parity. It'd be tough if Aljo was still the champion. The pieces are different. It'd be very compelling for him to claim that and then go after Sean after he deals with Marab, which is far more likely than Henry going right in after Sean, even though that's what he's like, he, he, what he would like. He understands that's probably not possible. And so it's just one of these peculiar positions where we could keep talking about something that's already decided and we can keep making an argument. That's not necessarily the wrong thing to do, but at some point you're going to have to come to terms with 
I'm not the guy. And when you can't get what you want, you got to go after the next best thing. Well, it was your goal or not. You have to do it. I mean, it's a Terry Brand's model. Comes to the Olympic Games. He wants to be champion. He gets beat in the semifinal. He's got to come back and get the next best thing, which is third, which is never what he wanted. But that's the way this game is played. Henry doesn't want to fight Marab. Henry wants to fight Sean. But he's looked at the board. He sees that isn't going to happen. At least not next. Okay, great. Do I want it two fights from now? Three fights from now? Do I never want to know? Or do I want to put myself in the best position for likelihood to become number one contender with the least amount of work, which is one fight instead of three? That's the strategy that Henry's invoking. Henry's very good at this game. I'm just sharing this for you. I'm sharing some of the moving parts here. I really believe what Sanhagen did was meaningful, but Sanhagen hasn't said it. Sanhagen isn't calling for it. Maybe that's because he's hurt. But it comes back to my example that you don't get a job that you don't ask for, right? I don't know what's up with Nurmagomedov. I don't know. It's been very quiet. I wouldn't even know how to get a hold of him, but I trust something, and he's mending, and he's not claiming, even with his beautiful record, that he's the number one contender. He's well aware. I got work to do. I owed a fight. I'll go and do the fight. You got Marab. He's red hot and angry, and I think that he should be, and I think he's awesome. I just don't think he's going to get in front of Chino, and I think that deal's already been made, by the way. And when you hang on, you want to be backup fighter, like th those are really good positions. They come with high risk, but they come with high reward. This, this scenario is a little bit different because the date hasn't been given. And one of the most interesting battles in MMA right now, which is going on behind the scenes, is the fact that Connor wants on December, Volk says he's doing December, Colby and Leon, to my understanding, have been penciled in for December, and now Sugar Sean. The rising star has called for the date. One of them's going to get it. How? How are they going to play those cards? How are you going to get it? That's the battle that nobody's speaking about. And that's what's making that card, for me, very interesting right now.